Michael, how does a New Yorker end up living in Wollongong and displaying his art here in Canberra? Oh, I asked myself that question many, many a times. But I, honestly, all jokes aside, I was sitting on the uh, beach at, at, at Venice and I was painting. And this gorgeous lady, gorgeous lady, walked up to me in Australia. I don't know what it is about Australian women, but I don't, wherever they go in the world, Spain, I don't care where they go in the world, they see somebody they want to, oh, yeah, you come with me, and the next thing you know, they in Australia. Uh, men too, I just, they just take them. So I looked up, and, and I was painting away, you know, painting. I looked up at her, and my eyes got wide. And I looked in her eyes, and I said, wow. Oh. And at the same time, I heard like this chorus. Ooh. I said, oh, man. <laughs> so anyway, about uh, three years later, and $15,000 on the telephone, I said, Dad, this is, this, this is not working here. I, I, do you have any stock in a telephone company? I, she said, no. I said, I don't either. So uh, I said, either you come there or I come here, and I wind up coming here. So that's how I got to Australia. And I, it, the, the Canberra part, I used to be at the Rocks. Uh, and I did some investigating, as a, a good artist would do, business artist would do. And I found out that the Kingston market was the number one, not two, not three, the number one market in the country. So i drive six hours a day if I had to to come to this market and that's what I do. That's why Kingston and Canberra. And your artwork's very interplanetary. It seems to have this big focus on the universe. Are you a frustrated Scientologist by any chance? Oh, not, no, 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 oh, no, no, not Scientology. Mm -mm -mm -mm. But I'm, 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 I'm not really religious, but I'm, I'm very spiritual. And being spiritual, if you're truly a spiritualist, then you have to encompass the planet that we live on. And if you encompass that, that's floating in whatever we call space or whatever, wherever we're where, where at. And so, yeah, you got to be planetary, but I'm not really planetary. I'm just spiritual. And my mind goes outside the box. Now, love found you by chance there in Venice. That must have been a beautiful moment. But how did art find you? Because you're not a trained artist at all. In 1990, I asked my boss for a raise. And my boss told me, in corporate America, my boss told me, I'm sorry, I can't give you any more money, Michael. I said, why? He says, well, for an African-American, you're making enough money. And I thought to myself, he didn't say that. I know he didn't say that. And two weeks later, I resigned and, you know, found myself depressed, as you do when you leave a 15-year career, no money couldn't go back to the workforce, you know, I shot myself in the foot with that one. So I got really depressed, really, really depressed, and one night, and I don't take drugs, and I don't drink, so it's not that. And I'm about late at night, and the wall started moving. I said, oh boy, you, you gone now, you really gone. And I heard pain. I looked around, and because I was in that state of mind, I was stupid enough to talk back to it. I said, pain, pain what? Pain what? I'm looking, pain what? You know, and, and the next morning I said, <laughs> yeah, well, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. you one step away from the nut house. That next night, I heard the pain again. I said, okay, okay, maybe the universe trying to tell me something. I went to the art store the next day, I walked in, I said, the owner, I said, I want to paint. The guy looked at me, he said, buy something and paint. He gets some art supplies and paint. I said, but you don't understand, I don't know about this. He said, well, pick something out and paint. I spent the day in there researching what this does, what that does, uh, what's oil, what's acrylic, blah, 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 pencils, etc., etc. And I walked out with the cheapest watercolors that I could find and the cheapest piece of paper I could find. Didn't have any money. And I painted. And I noticed the next couple of days that while I was painting, I wasn't thinking about any, doing anything detrimental to myself. And I said, oh, I like that. So I painted for two years straight. When I say straight, I mean seven days a week. Did not miss a day. And that was my therapy. So paint found me to save my life. Thank you, universe. Thank you. Just finally, Michael, not only are you an artist, you're a poet as well. Sum up what you're about, all about as an artist, the message that you're trying to get across to your customers each week here at the markets. You like putting people on the spot, don't you? <laughs> you like that, okay. Okay, so, yeah. So, uh, I'm going to show you, it's really my poetry. This is surrender. I give to you my love, 
and all that it sustains. I give to you my heart, knowing I had nothing to gain. I give to you my time with a clock has no hands. I give to you because it's what I must do. Knowing all that I know and knowing that you know that I know it's true, I have no choice. It's what I must do. For the love that I give is given unconditionally to 